Accused. When the fruit trees blossom pink, it's time to build a village shrine to the Virgin Mary. Pierre René, the old man who drowned the kittens, divides his barn in two. He puts his cows on one side. On the other side, a statue of Mary moves in. She wears her light blue robe and her golden crown. All during the month of May, people visit her and bring her flowers. One May morning, I walk to school with other children. A meadow shines with silver. We've heard pilots sometimes drop tinsel over fields at night. Are these shell casings? No one seems to know for sure. Could the shiny paper have chocolates inside? We have to go see. No, there's no chocolate, but the silver paper is so pretty, we toss handfuls of it into the air and watch them shimmer down. One boy collects a huge pile of silver papers. He sits down under a tree to count them. The rest, rest of us just grab as many as we can. Someone says, let's decorate the Holy Virgin's shrine. We run back to the village with our treasure. Patient as ever, Mary lets us decorate her with tinsel. It shines on the white tablecloth in front of her and on the bouquets of rosebuds in their milk cans and jars. The cows are out for the day, but their smell lingers with that of the roses. A sheepdog comes in to see what's happening. Old Pierre René's dog, someone whispers. Let's get out of here. But before we can escape, the wrinkled old man blocks the barn door. He shakes his six-fingered hand at us. Not in school, not in the fields. The day's still young and there's plenty of work to do. But do you help your parents? No, you make a mess of the virgin's shrine. We're decorating it for her, says the oldest, bravest girl. Look at the silver. Ours will be the prettiest shrine in any village. Pierre René shakes his head. Anything to get out of all the work God planned for us from the day Adam left the Garden of Eden. Bah! At the village center, I meet my friend Simone. She's playing hopscotch, but when she sees me coming, she drops her marker and walks away. Why, I wonder. I follow her. At first, she won't speak to me, but then she says, I can't play with you anymore. People say you and your mother are really Jewish. Are you hiding from the Germans? Silence. You are, aren't you? My mouth drops open, but no words come out. Who thinks we're Jewish? How did they figure it out? But I don't have time to think about this. Not now. I swallow hard and reply, Jewish? How could I be Jewish? Lots of Christians have left Paris since the war began. We had no eggs, no milk, no meat, no butter. We had to hide in bomb shelters at night. It was awful. We came here because it's quiet and peaceful and there's lots of good food. I knew those people were lying, says Simone. You're too nice to be Jewish. She smiles at me. Come on, she says as she pulls my hand. Want to go see my new baby brother? He's the ugliest one yet. I feel faint with relief. For a moment, I can barely see. Everything looks blurry, as if we're underwater. I grab Simone's hand and let her pull me along, blinking until my sight clears. Who are the people who suspect us, I wonder? Should I run and tell Mama right now? No, I'll act normal, I decide. I'll wait until tonight to tell Mama everything. Attacked. Like all the houses in our village, Simone's house has two rooms. One has a fireplace and a big table, and the other a huge carved bed. Simone's thin mother rests in the bed with her sleeping baby. Look how blessed I am with all these fine children, Odette. Simone can keep house and milk cows as well as I can. I don't know what I'd do without her. In fact, I need her today. Can you take the cows to the pasture this afternoon? Of course, I say, proud to be asked. Simone packs ham and rye bread for me for lunch. She puts it in a satchel with some cider. Now, Odette, says her mother, you know where the cows are, behind the house. Take them to the stream. You can keep your cider cool in the deep water there. At the stream, the four cows are happy with all the water, grass, and shade. After I find a good place to put my cider, I pick wildflowers for Mary's altar. Then I take off my rubber sandals and wade into the water to look for frogs. But a sound behind me makes me jump. Is it the cows? No, it's the village children marching toward me. One look tells me they're not here to play. They look like farmers ready to chop down a big tree. Paul, the big boy who threw stones at the kittens, is the leader. He has no family. 
The old lady he lives with works him too hard, almost as hard as a grown man. Simone walks beside him. I thought she had to help her mother. Something must have happened. She looks at me as though she's angry, as though she knows I've lied to her. I stand still and wait for them. When they come close, the children trap me in a half circle. You thought you could fool us, shouts Paul. We're not stupid. We knew if a Jew comes into your house, someone will die. And now that's happened, yells a younger boy. As soon as your mother rented that house from my parents, my brother Marcel got sicker and sicker. Now he's dead, just like Jesus. So our neighbor Marcel has died. But that can't be my fault. He's been sick since before I came to the village. I'm not Jewish, I yell back. Paul shouts, let's throw her in the water. Shove her face under until she drowns. The children all rush at me. I must run from the stream, get away fast, anywhere. I throw things, food, cider, rocks, flowers. I use my sandals to beat back my enemies. Then I run as far as I can get from the water. The children catch me at the hedge next to the pasture. I scratch, spit, kick, scream. You killed Marcel, I hear the children say. We'll tell the soldiers about you. Throw her in the thorn bush. Thorns are better than water, I think. Anything's better than drowning. Paul and the other boys roll me in the thorns. Then, like hunters done with their prey, they leave me. Simone grabs her satchel without even a glance back at me. She herds the cows home across the fields. Bruised and scratched all over, I roll away from the thorns into thick grass. I lie there and pant in the sun until my heart stops pounding. Then I reach for a daisy and pull off its petals one by one. They're gone. They're not gone. They're gone, I repeat to myself. When the last petal tells me that they really are gone, I get up. My blue cotton dress is torn. I find my sandals and put them on. Then I kneel down to pray. Thank you, God, for saving me. Please watch over my mother. I go back and find all the flowers I picked. I'm going to take them straight to Mary. On the way, I pass an old woman. She's collecting twigs for a broom in her basket. I might frighten her with my tangled hair and torn dress covered with cuts and sores. So I slip behind a tree and wait until the old woman passes. Why are all the children against me? Even my best friend, Simone, I wonder. Maybe it's true that Marcel is dead, but Mama said you can't live with tuberculosis forever. I say all my prayers, go to Mass, and do well at my lessons. What am I doing wrong? I put my hand on the left side of my chest. My star has been gone since I left Paris. Did God punish me because I told a lie, said that I was not Jewish? But my mother told me to lie. It's a matter of life or death, she said, and the priest tells us to obey our parents. Will the children ever play with me again? Will I have to walk to school all alone? Or worse, will people tell the Nazis we are Jews? Will they send Mama and me somewhere far away? If that happens, will we ever come back? The sun goes down, crickets start to sing, and the trees raise their arms like spooky ghosts. I shiver in my thin dress. All right, it's taking a turn not so much for the better. We'll see what happens next.